We're going to take parallelograms and we're going to go one more step with it in this video. Uh, in the past, we've solved for angles and then we solve for x. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to solve for sides and angles. Now, before we do that, we've got one more rule we've got to learn. So remember, we talked about opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary. So I've got two rules about sides, two rules about angles, and then the the last rule here is that the diagonals bisect each other. So let me tell you what that means. In a parallelogram, okay, so I'm gonna kind of sketch out a rough looking parallelogram here. You get the idea. There are things called diagonals. They go corner to corner, just like that. Now this word bisect means not just to cross. Sometimes you feel like, well, that means they cross, right? But that's intersect. Bisect means they don't just cross, they also cut each other in half. So remember the one marking means they're the same size. So those two sections would be equal and these two sections would be equal. So they cut each other in half. So diagonals bisect each other, cut each other in half. That's their new rule. All right, so let's take a look. Let's solve for EF in this parallelogram. Now look, they're not asking for X anymore. They're asking for EF. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up. I'm going to solve it for X, and then I'm going to plug X back in to solve for whatever distance they're looking for. So the first thing I need to do is I need to set up this equation. So what do I know about sides? I know sides are parallel. I know opposite sides are congruent. So I've got a set of opposite sides here. This one right here, E, F, and H, G. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them congruent. 12X minus 40 is equal to 8X plus 12. Now, some of you might be saying, well, what about the 3X plus 2? What are we doing with that? We're actually not going to do anything with it. Sometimes problems like to add extra information just to kind of distract you. All right, so 12X minus 40 is equal to 8X plus 12. So let's go ahead and plug that into Desmos. You could solve it by hand. So I get 12X minus 40 is equal to 8x plus, was it 12? Yes, 8x plus 12. And I get the answer of 13. So I know that x is equal to 13. So now what I need to do is I need to take this EF distance, or I want to find the EF distance, so I'm going to plug in for the x with EF. So I've got 12x minus 40, so I'm going to plug 13 in there. So I'm going to say 12, when I plug in x, I'm going to put it in parentheses, times 13 minus 40. And what do I get? I get 116 as a final answer. If I plug in 13, I'm going to get the problem wrong. So E is equal to 13, but EF is equal to 116. Okay, so just be on the lookout for something like that. Let's do one more. Okay, now notice where our variables are, where our expressions are. One of them is on AE, and one of them's on ED, okay? Those are diagonals, and what do I know about diagonals? I know they bisect each other, they cut each other in half, which means these two are the same size. So that tells me how to set it up. 4z minus eight is equal to 3z minus two. Now this is a pretty easy one. You could plug this into Desmos just like I showed you, or we can solve this by hand. I'm gonna solve this one by hand. Oh, that's not what I want to do. There we go, minus 3z. So I get z minus 8 is equal to negative 2. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. I get z is equal to 6. Okay, so that's z. Now I need to solve for ae. So I'm going to plug in right here. So I've got 4 times 6 minus 8. I'm going to do my order of operations, 4 times 6 first, I get 24 minus 8, which comes out to equal 16 as a final answer, okay? So I wanted to show you one with diagonals, and I wanted to show you one or two dealing with uh, some problems where we have to actually plug our x back in. You're not going to see a lot of them, but you're going to see a, lot, a few of them towards the end of the IXL. So hopefully this is helpful, but this ra largely wraps up most of what we're going to cover for solving for things in parallelograms.